Yo guys, what is up? It's Master Darius here bringing you guys here a commentary on a rather huge topic going around the community and it's actually, this topic is actually pretty big altogether in my opinion. It's uh, kind of big and it kind of will shape up Halo in the future on what becomes of this system and as we're going for Rex system. Currently, as of now, it's currently, the opinions is split 50-50 I would say around the community. Half of people like the randomness of a system and the other half hate the randomness of a Rex system and prefer the older versions of the unlock system such as the Reach Armor unlock system and the Halo 3 slash Halo 4 unlock system. And while I, while I agree that the Rex system does have a lot of faults in it, I do believe that it shouldn't be removed altogether because of some of its positives. Some of the positives it does bring are really beneficial for the community in some ways. So I think we need to somehow make a new system for Halo 6 that kind of combines the rec system with something else. So you have the positives combined with the positive, getting rid of the negatives. Hence making the best system for pretty much every one of you. And if people kind of hate it, it's their own problem. So anyway, so... So, I don't, it kind of irks me how people are suddenly praising Halo Reach recently as a Halo game. I do like Halo Reach, but it's by no means perfect. I don't know, how, I don't know how, why and how it's been happening recently, but people have been praising Reach kind of like it's a, the god Halo game, which kind of really isn't, to be honest. But anyway, so people have been kind of praising the Reach systems. A lot of people want the Reach credit system back, but let me just tackle this right out of the way instantly. So a reach credit system is not too special by any means necessary. It is kind of like the rec system in a sense. Of course, excluding the randomness. You know what you're going to be getting, but you do have to kind of grind the game, level up and earn those credit points to get the stuff you want. So it kind of is kind of similar to Halo 5, where in Halo 5 you have to grind to earn rec points. And the same thing goes for Reach. So Reach technically is a grind in itself, leveling up and earning those credits. And I see people saying that there is a sense of accomplishment when you earn a certain armor piece in Halo, for, uh, Halo Reach. Sorry. And if you see like some person of a big haunted or, um, helmet in the battlefield, that you say that they're a badass. Let me just call bullshit on that because technically, like I said, it's like Halo 5. You're kind of grinding for these armor sets. You're not really doing much of work, you're not doing challenges or achievements, you are grinding to play the game. A person that has haunted, he has just played the game a lot, he isn't necessarily good at the game. I've seen some crap haunted players in Halo Reach in the past. But anyway, there is the happiness factor of earning armor, I agree with that. You're happy to get the armor you finally earn, but that's actually can be said of pretty much about any unlock system, by the way. So. To compare with the Rex system from Halo 5, I'll be using the Halo 3 slash Halo 4 unlock system since I think that is the appropriate system to use since that's actually my favorite system so far in Halo in terms of unlocks. So let's talk about the positives of this unlock system first, of Halo 3 slash Halo 4. So for example, in Halo 3 you have to get achievements or level up to earn some armor pieces. In Halo 4 it was leveling up and commendations, and commendations were pretty much similar to challenges and achievements put together. So, the positive, starting up, yeah, you did have that sense of accomplishment once you got an armor in Halo 3. For example, if you complete a tough achievement in Halo 3, that you kind of had to work through in the campaign or in multiplayer, and then you suddenly have that armor, and that would be pretty good. You feel, you kind of feel that accomplishment of completing a hard achievement, which is good. And Halo 4, the same way, for example, you have the Venator armor piece, which you could only get by um, completing the assassination commendations. And once you completed that, it kind of took you a while to do. It wasn't easy to do. It wasn't that hard to do, but it took you a solid time and effort to actually go for the assassinations. And once you got it, You'd have a cool armor, but also you'd have that accomplishment, which is a really important factor. And then, moving on, it makes it hard to earn armor, and hence making each individual armor associated with accommodations or achievements much more rare and unique on the battlefield. And the only thing that is uh, that works for this in Halo 5 is technically the Achilles armor set, so that's the only one you can actually earn through accommodations, as well as the Helios Grill armor set that you can earn through achievements in Halo MCC. Next positive, it will motivate players to put more hours into the game because players will see that you can earn the armor and how you can earn it so they'll want to invest time into trying to get the armor so they can kind of show off to their friends 
myself in. Hence, for my next point, it sets a competition between friends to see who could earn an armor piece first before the other. Which uh, also keeps player retention. And um, the last positive I have is a secondary, it has a secondary purpose in game rather than just saving up points, let's just say, or leveling up or doing well in the game. It gives you another secondary purpose that you can do within your gameplay. Around just, just going for some generic kills or trying your best to get like headshots, you can try and go for the assassinations from time to time, for example. But however, there are some negatives of this system. They're not big negatives, but it's worth mentioning them. So for example, some non-dedicated Halo fans may not have the patience or, or motivation to invest the time into trying to complete the achievements or grind commendations for a specific armor sets. They want to get things a little bit easier. For example, Call of Duty, all you have to do is just level up to unlock some uh, weapon or prestige icon you wanted. That's just an example there. And the next negative, which is the biggest negative in my opinion, if you have it by itself, paid DLC will be present since companies cannot really earn money in the game otherwise so paid DLC leads to splits in the community which is not a good thing so as I said paid DLC would be the only way to earn money once the player actually buys the game and then last negative it may limit the amount of unlocks available since the potential number of suitable achievements and commendations to put in for the armor sets may of course run out you can't make an infinite number of commendations and achievements or challenges for a player to complete so you're gonna have a smaller amount of armor sets compared to for example having a rec system. So moving on now to the rec system and its positives. First of all, positive number one, it's very easy to add in new content for people to play around with such as the new rec weapons. So as you saw in the free DLC they keep on adding new stuff, new rec weapons, new weapon variants, new vehicles and etc. Pretty much because it's kind of easy to integrate new stuff in. You work on it and add it in, anyone can earn it, so that's pretty neat as well. I like that aspect. And then the companies, this is the, well, this is a positive for the companies, of course. Companies need to earn their money somehow. And if the companies earn their money, like Free Free did with Halo 5, so Rex, we continue to get free DLC. And, um, which is quite a big thing. So even after Wars and Firefight, we're still going to be getting free DLC and support. And maybe, it, I don't know, I'm not sure if it's because of the Rex success, but I'm pretty sure that is a aspect to it, so I'm pretty happy about that. So I, I'm glad to get free DLCs if um, companies make their money somehow. So, and of course the money earned by Free Free can also be used to invest into competitive competitions. And competitive com competitions can keep Halo big in esports and it can raise more awareness of games and generate more content of games as well. And then, of course, not forget, some people will, of course, like the exciting randomness. For example, YouTubers, um, let's just say Ready Up Live, may like the exciting randomness and they want to make videos and people want to tune in to see how lucky these YouTubers are in getting the stuff they want. It's kind of, people like the randomness stuff and especially watching it as well. And then you have the ability to add in an infinite amount of unlocks in the game because of course you're not limited to your commendations or achievements, you can just add in as much stuff as you want which is the main reason why Halo 5 Guardians has more unlocks than pretty much any other game out there. Oh well, any Halo game at least. So, And the system itself is actually better than the other microtransaction systems out there. For example, I'm going to be using Call of Duty to bash Call of Duty again because if you look at that it has paid DLC in it but it also has microtransactions which are kind of a rip-off because you're not guaranteed to get an item eventually that you want. It's always a lock factor to it. You can get the same stuff twice, duplicates. So and the chances of you getting this thing you want is pretty damn slim. So compared to the other microtransaction systems, the rec system is balanced and not exactly game breaking for a player. Now moving on to the negatives, you have the annoyance factor when you are unlucky and not getting the items you want and the player will be frustrated that they cannot directly approach a challenge or accommodation in order to get the armor they need or want. And of course, number one, there is no sense of accomplishment when you actually earn these things because pretty much you earn these things randomly. If you see someone on the battlefield, they earn their thing through luck or 
pretty much maxed out. It's just random. The whole rec system is random, so if you got something, it's uh, just through randomness. And most armors are no longer unique and rare on the battlefield, since pretty much any player can get them through luck, essentially, or just maxing out the things through rec points. But the only thing that is rare and kind of unique on the battlefield right now is the Achilles or and the original Helios Grill. Since the Achilles and uh, Helios Grill, you kind of earn through accommodations and achievements. So, hence making them more rare than yours. Even though some people that have Achilles are kind of assholes in a sense. Not all of them, but some. I'm talking here about farming. So, next negatives. It makes the players impatient to unlock older things, especially since older Call of Duty games, Halo Reach even, and other shooters tell you when you can expect to earn an item or what level you need to earn a new armor piece, camo or a gun. So the rec system in a sense is a bit more complicated to a newer player because they don't exactly know when they'll be earning armor. So if you go to an older game it's much more simple since you know how long you need to play the game or what you need to do to in order to get the thing you want. And, of course, there is the frustration to go through unlocking everything in a rec system and there is going to be things that you don't exactly want but you have to get in order to progress to the super rare legendary, such as the unwanted visors, of course. I freaking hate getting visors in games. There's, of course, a few I like but I don't want to get, like, the 50 unwanted ones and it makes things especially frustrating for the player. So that's pretty much the rec system versus the, um... Halo 3 slash Halo 4 system for you guys, and so now I did come up with a solution perhaps, and of course I would be suggesting a hybrid between the Halo 3 and the Halo 4 way, and with the Halo 5 rec system, so this would pretty much please most of the community, so you have like the multiple badass armor sets, I would say, unlockable through the Halo 3 slash Halo 4 method, um, so of course you have these commendations and achievements, quite a number, let's just say 50 armor sets you can lock through achievements and accommodations in day one, you get those done and then you get the armor sets. However, you'd still have most cosmetics such as skins and etc unlockable and our armor sets unlock unlockable through Rex. And most of the stuff added, for example, in free DLCs should be added in Rex, but however, every Rex dropout say they should make about, have at least one to two new unlockable armor sets or cosmetics, whatever, unlockable through DLC achievements or even new commendations for these um, DLCs. It'll and plus, overall, this will benefit everyone in the community, I believe. The enjoyment of randomness and accomplishment through challenges will be there, thus pleasing both sides. And it keeps more players hooked in the game as well, since you have more opportunities and more options to approach gain armor sets and whatever you want pretty much. And of course it keeps the developers keep getting money and we get the stuff we want so it's kind of a win-win for pretty much everyone, the consumer and the developer in this case. The developers get their money like I said and we get to have more options in earning armor sets and we get we still get free DLCs. That's a win-win right there so hope you guys enjoy this commentary and I'll see you guys next time.